This is Healing Your Soul with Katie Souza. Real keys to the miraculous. What's weighing you down, holding you back? What has wounded your soul? Today with Katie, discover the healing power of God for your life. Katie was once broken, oppressed, in bondage to a life of mental and physical pain until God gave her a new life and powerful messages of how you can heal your wounded soul. Now, here is Katie to begin today's program. Hi, this is Katie Souza. Welcome to Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. Last week, I shared with you the story of my mom's 25-year-long illness and how God led me through her affliction to receive the healing anointing this ministry carries today. One of the first things God revealed to me about mom's sickness was that it was coming from what he called a demonic king. When he said that, I was like, what's that? What does that mean? I'd never heard of that before in my life. But then the Holy Spirit began to systematically release a string of revelation that completely wowed me. I'd read the Bible front to back dozens of times when I was in prison. I never saw this until the Holy Spirit showed it to me. Then when I started walking it out, it was a game changer. This series on Demonic Kings is going to be our most powerful series yet. When you get this revelation, you're gonna start kicking the enemy in the teeth. Let's check it out now. Tonight's program is about a revelation that I received many years ago, actually. And since that time, it has grown into one of the most powerful keys for healing that I've ever encountered. It's gained new levels of dominion as time has gone past, and now I believe it's reached a peak of having its season of time, of fullness to be released. Amen? This revelation has changed my life, and I believe it'll change yours too. It is about the soul. That's what these programs are about. They are about the wounded soul and how the Bible says that though we are, when we are born again in Christ, our spirit man is made perfect, our soul man is not. Our soul man has to go through a process of being healed and brought into the fullness of Christ. And the Bible says that there are certain things that can actually, quote, wound, wound our soul man, and that is sin and trauma. When we commit sins or someone sins against us or even our ancestors sin, those sins can literally leave a wound inside our soul. When we go through traumas, divorces, loss of children, loss of family members, loss of jobs, loss of homes, an elongated sickness, those traumas can literally wound our soul. And when our soul is wounded, it can affect every part of our life. It can ruin our relationships, cause divorces, cause churches to break up, cause businesses to fall apart, cause ministries to go flat. It can affect our finances and it can affect our, our physical health. The Bible says in 3 John 1, we will be prospered and brought into health even as our soul prospers. When our soul is wounded, it can affect all those areas of our life. But when our souls are healed, that's when we're going to see the breakthrough. That's when we're going to see the marriages restored and families coming back together and churches being united and, and ministries taking off and exploding and businesses being successful. And yes, health in your body, health in your mind, health in your emotions, health in your finances. Amen. We will prosper and be in health even as our soul is prospered. Now, I've spoken before in past programs about how these wounds allow spirits, demonic spirits, to afflict us, to torment us, to affect us. The woman bowed over. Remember the her story? So that she was bowed over with a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. For 18 years, she could in no wise stand up straight. A spirit had her pinned. It had literally bent her spine over and was keeping her there. It was called a spirit of infirmity. If you look up that word infirmity, it will tell you the answer about what gave that spirit the legal right to attack that woman. That word infirmity in the Greek, according to the Strong's, means weakness and infirmity of the body and of the soul. See that? It was a wound in her soul that allowed a spirit to literally bend her spine over. When Jesus loosed her of that wound... When he said, woman, you are loosed, 
He not only commanded the spirit to leave, but he loosed her of that wound that was inside her soul. He healed her of that wound. And then the legal right, that spirit had to be there, went, and so did the spirit with it. Amen? We're going to go into this. We're going to go deeper in this program, into this revelation about how these spirits are able to attack every area of our lives and make us sick when we have wounds in our soul. Now, in a previous program, I told you the story about my mom. She was sick for 25 years. She had been bitten by a Lyme's tick, and it caused a spirochete bacteria to be released into her body. And that bacteria began to eat her cartilage. It began to eat her bones. And then to make matters worse, she developed rheumatoid arthritis, extreme rheumatoid. And that began to affect her bones and her cartilage. She began to lose all the different parts of her body. She, began, she lost her knees first. They put in artificial knees. She lost her hip. They put in an artificial one. She actually stood up at that point and walked. But six months later, she collapsed. They took her to the hospital. They took the hip out and found out that the spirochete had eaten the plastic parts of the man-made hip. Wow. She lost the, the cartilage in the knuckles of her fingers, and it caused the little bones in her fingers to fall out of her knuckles. So you could actually take her fingers and spin them around because there was nothing to hold them down. She went through many painful, painful years, 25 years of these diseases slowly consuming her, her skeletal structure. It was agony for her. In the beginning of 2006, I had just gotten out of prison not too long before that, and God led me through supernatural signs to go to a church in California that has a very, very powerful healing ministry. I had never heard of the church before until God told me about it. But I, I obeyed his voice and his leading, and I went to that church. And when I was there, I received the anointing to drive out demons and heal the sick. And I remember being so excited. I, I felt a, a, tangible, a tangible encounter with the anointing. When it came down, it, I, it felt like liquid honey, like warm liquid oil coming down and filling my arm. My arm actually got heavier. I could feel it being weightier with the anointing. And so when I got home, you can imagine I was very excited thinking, okay, this is it. Mom's going to get a miracle. The nightmare's going to be over. And I began to pray for her and pray for her and pray for her and pray for her and nothing happened. I remember the next day I went and I prayed for her again. I prayed for her again and I felt the anointing moving. I, I felt the heat. I felt the power. I'd never felt it before, but nothing happened. And again on the third day, the same thing and nothing happened. I, I was beginning to think that I didn't get anything, that I was just somehow making it up or something. But God's not a man that he should lie. He told me I was going to go there and get it and I did. And I remember on that third day, just as I was about to be despondent and maybe even give up, my stepfather came home from the emergency room. And he had had trouble for years with his, with his prostate. And this time it had gotten so bad that they had to schedule him for surgery. Two surgeries, two major surgeries. And I remember just going over there, laying hands on him, praying for him, and he was healed. So I knew I'd gotten it. Amen? But then I was like, so I'm praying for mom, and why didn't she get it? What was up with that? Well, how many of you know you can get an anointing, but you have to learn how to operate in it? There are keys that God begins to give us so we can understand how to move the anointing. See, back then, I did not understand about the soul. I did not understand about the soul. I didn't understand that the soul could be wounded and that it could cause physical illness and disease. And I believe that one of mom's issues that I didn't understand at that moment was that her soul was wounded. And it was allowing a spirit to bend her bones and consume her bones, just like that spirit of infirmity bent over that woman's bones. It bent her spine. That spirit was somehow able to afflict her bones, and mom had a bone disease. It was so amazing because when mom passed, she passed in 2008, and we did have some miracles before she passed, but she, in the end, she did not get her full healing, not, not even close. And when she passed in 2008, they gave me her Bible. And as I... read through her Bible, she had all these soul scriptures underlined. Spirit was trying to tell us the whole time. But in 
in our limited understanding, we didn't get it. But you know what? It's okay because God used mom as our seed. Unless a seed falls in the ground and dies, it cannot produce a harvest. Mom was our seed because since then, I have seen thousands of bone miracles. Thousands. Thousands of bone miracles. Amen? So today, we're going to go deeper into this revelation about the soul, and I'm going to expand into a deeper understanding about these spirits of infirmity that are able to attack us in our physical bodies because we have woundedness inside of us. I'm going to talk about the ranks that are in the kingdom of darkness and how these spirits of infirmity are actually smaller spirits that have larger, more powerful entities over them. Jesus referred to them as strong men. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 12. He said this, Verse 29, how can anyone enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? You see, the kingdom of darkness is like an army, and at the top of the ranks are strong men. See, every army has ranks in it. The angelic army has, has ranks in it. Michael is the, the chief of the warring angels, and he has ranks of angels underneath him. Like the U.S. Army has ranks, and it has generals, colonels, lieutenants, etc., etc. Every army has ranks, and that includes the demonic army. Do you remember the demoniac at the tombs? Remember the spirit that afflicted him? It said its name was Legion. See, that tells us right there. The demonic spirits are part of an army because Legion is a Roman army term. Amen? There are ranks in the kingdom of darkness, and at the top of the ranks are strong men. And if we want to bind or cast out all the smaller spirits, the ones we deal with every day, like spirits of infirmity, unclean spirits, spirits of alcoholism, uh, spirits of blindness, deaf spirits, dumb spirits, spirits of perversion. If we want to cast those smaller spirits out, the ones that we're battling every day, we need to first bind the strong men. Then we can thoroughly ransack his house. Amen? How do you bind a strong man so that you can then thoroughly ransack every spirit in his house? Guess what the answer is? <laughs> you get your soul healed. I'll, just go home for yourself if you don't believe me. And look up the word strong man in the concordance. And you'll see what it means in the Greek. Let me read it to you now. It says this. One who has strength of soul to sustain the attacks of Satan. Did you hear that? That's the meaning of the word strongman. One who has strength of soul to sustain the attacks of Satan. What does that mean? When you get strong in your soul, when you get healed of the wounds that are in your soul, your soul will become so strong that Satan and his strong men will not be able to attack you anymore. Today, with your support, you are giving hope and healing to a life that may be in a desperate need of life change. For years, I lived a life of drugs and violence, and I eventually ended up in prison. When I was out on the streets, I did major damage to everyone around me, and I was just one person. Now, think about this. Every year, hundreds of thousands of inmates are released. We need to get them healed while they're still inside so they don't do major damage to themselves and the world around them when they get out. For several years, we've been going into prisons and seeing that happen. And now, you can help. Call now. And when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of The Healing School 6-Disc Set. With a gift of $28 or more, you will have a part in putting Healing School resources into the hands of a life that is ready for a chance to change. Again, call toll-free. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of The Healing School. The Healing School CD Set will open up your understanding to the deeper things in the Bible that you may have never heard before. So if you're stuck and you've tried everything and nothing has worked, this CD set will reveal God's healing power and bring results that really work. This set could be the key to your breakthrough. Call now, 1-800-789-7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. As I study the word, I see how almost every part of our lives is connected 
to the health of our souls, including spiritual warfare. Amen. It's our wounded souls that are giving strong men and all the spirits in their house the right to attack us. Okay. Now, does the Bible say who these strong men are? It actually does. Satan, of course, is the strong man, right? But underneath him are many other strong men that he's placed in positions of power around the world with the express purpose of sending out soldiers underneath them to torment, afflict, and control mankind. So who are these strong men? Well, the Bible calls them despots, which a despot is a tyrant king. Let's look at it. I'm in Ephesians 6, 12, and I'm reading from the Amplified. It says this, and notice as I read, it's going to give us the order of the ranks in the kingdom of darkness. It says this, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood, contending only against physical opponents, but against, now here's the ranks and the order, but against despotisms, powers, and master spirits who are the world rulers of this darkness. Okay, there's the ranks. It lists them for you right there. And at the top are the strong men that Jesus talked about. This scripture calls them despots, despots. When you look at the word despot in the dictionary, it means tyrant king, tyrant king. See, these despots are the strong men that Jesus talked about. They are tyrant kings. And underneath these strong men in their house are the next two listed, the next two ranks listed in the scripture. It says this, that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with despots, powers, and master spirits. If you look at the word powers, in the dictionary, it actually means this, orders of angels. See, there's the various ranks, like colonels, lieutenants, privates. Oh, not even the privates, but colonels, lieutenants. See, those powers are these different ranks in the kingdom of darkness, and they're directly underneath the despot, these tyrant kings. And then after them are the, quote, master spirits. What does that mean? The word master just means to control. Every spirit has the ability to control you in some way. They're kind of like the privates of the army. See, that's the ranks in Scripture of the demonic army. The despots, which are tyrant kings, they're the strong men, and underneath them in their house are the powers and the master spirits. Now, according to the Scripture, and we didn't realize it, is we're actually fighting against kings. Despot, tyrant, kings. Now, I want you to think about it. Boy, that makes sense. That makes a whole bunch of sense. You know why? Because throughout the entire Bible, and the Bible is always our gauge, isn't it? It's always our standard, isn't it? Throughout the entire Bible, who is Israel always fighting? Evil kings, aren't they? They're always fighting and battling against evil kings, aren't they? When Lot got taken captive, who took him into imprisonment? Who kidnapped him? Five evil kings. When Abraham came to save his nephew Lot, who did he have to battle? Those five evil kings. When Israel was in bondage and slavery in Egypt, who put him there? An evil king, Pharaoh, and his kingdom. When Israel escaped that slavery, and they went through the desert, who did they have to fight as they crossed the desert? Evil kings and their kingdoms. When they took the promised land, who did they have to take it from? 31 evil kings and their kingdoms. Israel's constantly battling against what? Kings, right? Kings. When Israel went into imprisonment into Assyria, who took them there? The king of Assyria and his kingdom. When Jerusalem, the people in Jerusalem later on, they were rebellious and defied God. What happened to them? They went into imprisonment. Who took them there? The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom. Israel throughout the entire history of the Bible has battled evil kings and their kingdoms. Now let me ask you a question. What kind of kings were they? They were kings that were pagan kings, right? They were pagan kings, which means what? They worshiped idols. Every one of those kings that Israel fought in the natural actually worshiped idols. They were idol worshipers. What is an idol? Do you think it's just a statue? Do you think it's just a, uh, some sort of a stone or something that people worship? No, actually, those statues represented what? Evil spirits. They're actually worshiping evil spirits. So who do you think those kings got their power from to or in order to battle Israel? Evil spirits, didn't they? 
Those evil spirits empowered those kings to make battle with Israel, didn't they? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Those evil spirits were giving those kings the ability to go to war against Israel. You know, it says that whenever they went into battle against the Israelite people, that they would actually consult those demonic powers that they worshiped for strategy against God's people. Now, what does the Bible say? We wrestle not with flesh and blood, right, but with despots. You see, when Israel was fighting those kings in the natural, yes, those, they might have been literally physically fighting those kings to win the, the war, but what was the root? Who were they really battling? They were wrestling not with flesh and blood, but against despots. They were fighting against desperate tyrant kings in the spirit. Now, when those pagan kings that fought Israel died, do you think the spirits that backed them up and gave them their power died with them? No, they didn't. They're still alive and well. And do you think they're still on the same assignment to attack you? You know, this is a great revelation. This is great news. You know why? Because before, we would always read this, this statement from Jesus, if you want to thoroughly ransack the strong man's house, you got to first bind the strong man. But we'd be like, well, who's the strong man? Well, the Bible is full of strong men. They're called despots, tyrant kings. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against despots. The Bible is full of these kings who were backed up by these evil spirits, and they were always fighting against Israel. So now we've got a whole book of information about the strongman. We can read about those kings. We can see their strategy against Israel. We can see how they won the battle. Or we can see what Israel did to gain the victory over them. We can study them. We can learn their tactics. We can learn their strategies. And we can win the battle because now we have a whole information book about the strong men that we didn't even realize we had. Because we're battling with despots. Amen? Do you guys get it? Just take an example. Let's just take an example of two, two kings in the Old Testament. Okay, so King Ben-Hadad, do you remember him? He was the king that put the people in Samaria under famine. Now, who do you think gave him the power to do that? The spirits that he worshipped, right? The despot, tyrant king spirit that was backing him up gave him the power to put God's people in famine. Now, when King Ben-Hadad died in the natural, do you think that spirit died with him? Do you think that spirit is trying to do the same thing to you that it did to all the people in Samaria? Do you think that spirit's tr still trying to put famine in your life? Yes, he's the strong man over famine, amen? <clears throat> when you look at uh, King Balak, do you remember him? Do you remember his story? Numbers 22 to 24, what did King Balak try to do? He was ruthlessly trying to curse the Israelite people. He did everything in his power to get Israel cursed. Do you remember that story? Now, who do you think gave him the power or was driving him to get God's people cursed? It was the spirits he worshipped. It was the evil despot spirits. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against despots. It was that spirit that was trying to drive that king to curse Israel. Amen? Now, when King Ben had died in the natural, do you think that spirit died with him? Do you think he's still trying to curse God's people today? Yes, he is. He's the strong man over every curse. This Revelation is so good because now we have information, biblical information that can empower us to win the war when we wrestle not with flesh and blood but against despots, powers, and master spirits. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. These demonic kings are the strong men Jesus referred to in Matthew 17. Once you bind the strong man, then you can thoroughly ransack all the spirits of poverty, disease, and disorder in his house. Do you remember how to bind the strong man? The word strong man means one who has strength of soul to resist the attacks of Satan. The way you bind the strong man is you get healed in your soul. Now, if you've been watching these shows, you remember all the scriptures I've shown you that prove that Jesus heals your soul. It's his blood that he shed at the cross and a power called dunamis that comes from the resurrection. First, we need the cross because the blood gets rid of any sin that might have wounded us. But then we also need dunamis that comes from the resurrection because the word dunamis means excellence of soul. That's the power that heals every wound inside our inner man. Let me pray for us now. 
Lord Jesus, I ask that you would wash away every sin that ever wounded our inner man. I pray that the power of the cross would be released in our lives and that the blood shed by Jesus would go back in time to every place sin has wounded us, even back through the generations all the way to Adam. Lord, wash us clean of all sins of idolatry, rebellion, transgression, iniquity, and sins both known and unknown, including sins that were committed against us. Take your blood and cleanse us completely of every sin in our soul. And I also command that our souls would be filled with dunamis power that comes from the resurrection. Paul said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Show us your power now, Lord. Fill us with dunamis and cause us to be excellent of soul. I decree we are healed of every wound that's in common with the strong man and that we will have total dominion over every demonic king because we are healed in our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, with your support, you are giving hope and healing to a life that may be in a desperate need of life change. For years, I lived a life of drugs and violence, and I eventually ended up in prison. When I was out on the streets, I did major damage to everyone around me, and I was just one person. Now, think about this. Every year, hundreds of thousands of inmates are released. We need to get them healed while they're still inside so they don't do major damage to themselves and the world around them when they get out. For several years, we've been going into prisons and seeing that happen, and now you can help. Call now, and when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of The Healing School 6-Disc Set. With a gift of $28 or more, you will have a part in putting Healing School resources into the hands of a life that is ready for a chance to change. Again, call toll-free. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of The Healing School. The Healing School CD set will open up your understanding to the deeper things in the Bible that you may have never heard before. So if you're stuck and you've tried everything and nothing has worked, this CD set will reveal God's healing power and bring results that really work. This set could be the key to your breakthrough. Call now, 1-800-789-7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. Next week, we're gonna continue our series on demonic kings. At the end of every program, we're gonna work on getting healed of everything we have in common with these strong men. Okay, we'll see you next week. Do you have a friend or loved one in prison? I'd love to send them a free copy of my book. Just log on to katiesouza.com and fill out a prisoner book request today.